cataractcoach.com. You got a 92-year-old mom of an ophthalmologist. So a colleague sends you his mom for cataract surgery. You know, it's always a big honor to operate on a fellow ophthalmologist or the family members of a fellow ophthalmologist. Because having that trust and respect of your peers, it's so much more important than having a celebrity endorsement. You know, the celebrities on whom I operate in Beverly Hills, they don't know a dang thing about ophthalmology. Let's be frank here. They probably can't spell ophthalmology. I bet you not a one knows the O-P-H-T-H, right? I mean, come on. But when a colleague sends you his own eyes or her own eyes or family member's eyes, that's a really big deal. And you really, the pressure's on, but you really have an opportunity to shine and show that, you know, you can really deliver a beautiful outcome. Now, undoubtedly, this fellow ophthalmologist is here in California. And he wanted me to do surgery for his mom. His mom's 92. A pretty healthy 92, by the way, but she's still 92. And you can see the tissues here, they look like a 92-year-old. A little bit more delicate on the capsule here. A little bit of wrinkling there. Not as taut or tight with that zonular support. Anterior capsule's a little bit loose. But again, for 92, pretty darn good. Now, the pressure's on here as well because what else happens with age? Well, the patient sure has some astigmatism, but luckily it's just a little bit against the rule, and that phaco incision is going to be enough to neutralize it. But there's that 5 millimeter rexus. Now, in a case like this, I don't want to prolapse that nucus out of the bag. Let's leave it in the bag. We'll chop it in the bag. And we're going to put in a monofocal lens and give this patient an outcome of Plano. She's about a plus 2 hyperop to, to begin with. And you can see as you rotate that nucleus, there's just a little bit of zymor instability or laxity, and it's going to make things a little more challenging. But we're going to do a beautiful job. There's a little bit more aliquot of a viscoelastic to recoat that central endothelium, and we'll put the phaco probe in here. Now, the pressure is definitely on, but if you're watching these videos, you already know you're driven to be at the top of your game. And even if you're at the beginning of your career, you will advance your skills dramatically. And at some point, you will operate on fellow ophthalmologists and their family members. So here's the chop right at the beginning and getting that nucleus to split. And you can see there's a lot of kind of haze to the view from a lot of that cortex. So we'll clean up some of that and make sure we got a good split there. And once I've split that nucleus and created two halves, I can bring up one half. Let's get the chopper behind it and let's get that chopped into smaller fragments. And in doing this, the nice part as well is keeping in touch with the, the ophthalmologist who sent you the family member. So at the end of this case, right there in the operating room, I picked up my cell phone, called the colleague and said, I just want to let you know, did your mom's cataract surgery, everything went beautifully and no surprises. And that's courtesy. You know, one of you viewers is going to do my cataract surgery one day. And I want you to give me that same high level of care. And so I also go one step beyond. We know that our incision and the capsorexis are the signatures that we leave on every eye and how well that lens is centered, etc. But even more importantly, I actually send a video of the surgery to the ophthalmologist. If I'm doing surgery on the ophthalmologist's own eye, he or she definitely wants to see the video. And even if on a family member, they like to see it as well. And it shows that I just take pride in what I do. And even little things. Take a look here, like chopper in the safe position to make sure the capsule doesn't come up. Look at the draping, every lash out of the way, the lid margin totally sequestered. And the patient, of course, very comfortable. Important on a case like this that I use an anesthesiologist because, as you know, the therapeutic window for systemic anesthesia even if it's just a short-acting benzodiazepine, that window can be pretty narrow, especially in nonagenarians. When you're 90 plus years old, you know, a very narrow therapeutic range for anesthetic. You can give a little bit too much, and next thing you know, the patient's really too deep in terms of anesthesia. So here we'll be gentle in polishing up the capsule. I'm not going to go overboard in polishing this. As you can expect, you're not going to have a very strong or tremendous inflammatory response in a 92-year-old. Certainly not like you're going to have when you're operating on a young person. And you've cleaned up the capsule rack very nicely. A cohesive viscoelastic goes in. And I also did clear with the ophthalmologist who sent me his mom. I said, you know, does, would, I, would it be okay to put in this lens? You know, as you know, some ophthalmologists have preference of one lens over the other. This is that new Clarion lens. So a nice material that's not going to have any glistening. It's a full 6 millimeter optic, hydrophobic acrylic, a little bit of a tint to it, a natural tint. Put that lens in the capture bag, and we'll dial that in nice and easily. Now the capture bag and a little bit loose zonular support compared to a younger patient, well, you don't want to manipulate things too much. Oh, look at the floater back there. You can see a big PVD in the vitreous coming across the view every once in a while. 
we're obviously not going to be touching or bothering with that. At the end of the case here, I want to make sure we're going to have a nice low pressure on post-op day one. So going behind the optic, removing that viscoelastic, and then we'll clean out all the viscoelastic from the front of the eye as well. Wanting to be as minimally invasive, invasive and atraumatic as possible. So again, it's a big honor to do surgery on a mom of an ophthalmologist or do surgery on a fellow ophthalmologist. It's going to be one of the biggest honors of your career, and you'll do it many, many times. And I want you just to take pride in it. Yes, it can be a little nerve-wracking. If you want to know how I control my nervousness, there's a video on Cataract Coach you can search called Do You Get Nervous? And that's a day where I operate on a mom and a dad of a fellow ophthalmologist here in Southern California back-to-back while he watched in my operating room. And I wore a heart monitor to show you that throughout the whole case, my heart rate didn't get above 80. So I stayed nice and calm and collected. And of course, that's when we do our good work. Here at the end of the case, a little triamcinolone. And then we also put in some moxifloxacin and let's seal up those incisions, get a normal IOP, and we're done with the case. Nice and watertight, and the patient had a beautiful outcome. Thanks for watching.